Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some puzzles from the very first collection by Tanya Weeks Photography. So Tanya Weeks is a photographer based in Queensland, Australia. And of course she's used some of her stunning photography to put together this beautiful puzzle collection. So there's actually five puzzles in this collection. Um, I have three of them. So the two I don't have, there's one that features some really beautiful feathers and that one's called Feathered Friends. And another one has a collection of gorgeous seashells and that one's called Sea Gems. So let's look at the ones I've got here. So we've got this one called Citrus Burst and it features these very vibrant, colorful and very, I think, summery uh, sliced open citrus fruit. So yeah, it's a very sort of happy and cheerful and yeah, fun summer sort of puzzle, I think. And then this next one is called Le Macaron. And this one has more of a sort of pastel color palette, I think, and it features these very pretty and very delicious looking macarons. So, yeah, I think this one's a very uh, pretty and sort of fun looking puzzle. And then this last one is called Desert Beauty. And this one has these really gorgeous uh, succulent plants, all in different sort of colors and all different textures. And I actually just did this one over on Instagram, so you can go check that out if you're interested. And spoilers, I really enjoyed it. I had a great time uh, putting this puzzle together, although I did find it quite challenging. Um, definitely doable, not at all frustrating. And yeah, just a really uh, fun and I guess, yeah, challenging puzzling experience. Um, so I've actually already decided which of these three I'm doing for the video. So obviously not this one. And I've decided that I'm going to keep Citrus Burst for my Instagram as well. So that should be out really close to when you're seeing this video I would say so keep an eye keep an eye out for that um, so I've decided I think it would be fun to put together Le Macron for this video just because why not it's really pretty and yeah just love the color palette and love macarons who doesn't um, so yeah I think this one would be fun to do um, so in a sec let's have a closer look at the packaging unbox it uh, have a closer look at the pieces and of course put it together all right, so let's have a closer look at the packaging. So first up on the front, we've got a uh, beautiful uh, part of the image. So uh, this is not the entire image, it's just a section and it actually kind of wraps around the sides, as you can see there. Um, I think even with the sides, though, that's still not the entire image. I think there's more to it than that, um, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, and then down here, it's got Tanya Wicks Photography. So I guess sort of like her branding and logo. Um, then we've got Le Macaron and it says the art of mindfulness. So like a little tagline and the name of the puzzle. And then over here, which I forgot to mention, these are all 1000 pieces. So yeah, it says 1000 and it says puzzle and it's got the size here in centimeters, 50 by 70 centimeters. I'll pop the equivalent in inches on the screen. And then, yeah, so the sides are uh, all just have sort of like more of the image. And then the only one that's a bit different is this one here, which has a lovely Australia logo and it says proudly Australian. So that's nice. And then on the back here, we've got quite a bit of text here. We've got the art of mindfulness and it's sort of a bit of a blurb about uh, the puzzles and, you know, how you can sort of relax and be mindful with these beautiful puzzles. It talks a bit about the quality and the images. And yeah, so it has a bit, I guess, yeah, it kind of gives you an overall idea of what to expect from doing one of these beautiful puzzles. And then we've got some, again, the little Australia logo and proudly Australian and the website um, and a little sort of hazard message. So yeah, and a little bit more socials here. So yeah, some nice information there. So let's open this up and have a look on the inside. And of course you might notice I don't have my scissors because I know we don't need them. So that's cool. So the inside of the box is just uh, white or has a bit of the image wrapping around again, but yeah, just white. And then we have here a Ziploc bag. Yay. <laughs> so that's good. Nice resealable bag with our puzzle pieces. And then we have a little sort of card here. It's just blank on this side, but on this side it has uh, Tanya Weeks photography and it's just basically saying, thank you so much for your order. You are supporting a small Australian business, which I think is great. That you can do that and you know you can share your puzzling experience on social media um, you can leave a google review it's got her website yeah so just a little thank you and I guess you know how to leave feedback about it so that's nice and then we have a little poster here 
So that's why I was saying it didn't matter too much if we can't see the whole image on the front of the box because we do have a reference poster, poster included. I guess it's about roughly sort of, maybe it's a little bigger than A4. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's nice and clear. Um, yeah. So nothing wrong with that. I think it's a reasonable size. Seems like a pretty convenient size. I can, I mean, especially with this image, the macarons are nice and bright and bold. So I think you can see enough of the detail with this size poster. And then the box is just, yeah, like more of this um, sort of brownish color, which I forgot to mention there's, yeah, just plain color on the sides. There's nothing written on there. And yeah, just plain white on the inside. So let's open up the pieces and have a look. So also, before I forget, um, looking at the bag, there's not really much puzzle dust. Like it's a little sort of cloudy-ish looking, but really like there's no like chunky bits of puzzle dust. So that's good. And it smells very cardboardy and like a fresh brand new puzzle because it is. Um, so let's have a look at the piece shapes. Um, so it sort of has obviously edges, um, but it looks like it's sort of got your kind of traditional I guess pieces, we've got like a three tab here, we've got a little two tab, we've got a different type of two tab. What else have we got? A one tab. Uh, do we have a four? Maybe. Oh, we've got one with like the inverted or zero. And it's probably a four, I don't know. Ah, I'm always like digging around for the right piece. Well, let's, uh, I'm guessing there probably is one with four tabs as well. Um, if I find it, I'll include it in the picture at the top. Um, but yeah, so they're all pretty like standard sort of uh, like piece shapes or traditional piece shapes. Um, but they do have quite a bit of variation in them. Like even like some of them sort of have little bends to them or are a bit of a quirky sort of variation or take on that piece shape. So yeah, that gives me sort of uh, Hope. Well, I know, I know from my experience of doing the Desert Beauty Succulents puzzle, I didn't have a single false fit at all. So I'm assuming this will be very similar. Um, yeah, I was really pleased with the piece fit in that one. The pieces, yeah, like I said, no false fits and they just went together really well. So I'm sort of guessing that this is going to be the same. So I think, yeah, because of all these little variations and quirks in the piece shapes, that's going to help it. Uh, not have any false fits. So yeah, I think that will be good. And then I guess let's look at a single piece. I don't know, uh, this one. Okay, so the back is a beautiful gray board, very you know straightforward, simple, uh, no paper. Yeah, just nice. And then the thickness is, I guess like you could say sort of a medium to chunky thickness, a very nice looking thickness. Um, yeah, looks good. Does, yeah, definitely doesn't look flimsy. I mean, I'm sure I could bend it if I tried, but it feels a little bit bendy maybe, but I think it's just going to depend on the shape of the piece. Some pieces are going to be a bit more bendy than others. Um, and just because it is a little bendy, that doesn't mean it's going to, there's anything wrong with it or anything like that. That's, you, know, you can generally bend cardboard pieces, I guess. Um, but in general, it feels strong. It's not flimsy or anything. So yeah. And then the top is a lovely sort of matte finish. Um, there is like the very tiniest amount of shine. So if I like move it around, I can definitely see a little bit of sheen, but it's not at all glossy. Like it is still definitely like a matte finish. It's very smooth. So I think that's probably why there's a bit of sheen because of how smooth it is. So yeah, that just does pick up a tiny bit of light. Um, I didn't have any problems with any glare or sheen when doing the uh, Desert Beauty puzzle, so I'm assuming I won't with this one. It is sort of a different color palette though, so I don't know if that impacts it at all. Um, but yeah. And then the other thing I was going to say is um, the image looks very crisp and clear. Like I can see a lot of details here. So I mean, I sort of expect that from like photography type puzzles where, you know, the photographer has made the puzzles herself. So you know, she has access to high quality uh, prints and everything. So yeah, I think like it all looks good. The colors seem to match the box and the poster. Yeah, so I'm really excited to do this one. 
Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the quality. It all looks good. Um, yeah, I, I had a great time doing the other puzzle, so I think I'm ex sort of expecting good things on this. I, I guess the, that's the other thing I haven't seen any damaged pieces. I didn't find any in the other puzzle either, so I think like I don't really expect to find any in here, or if I do, probably very minimal. Um, but like so far, I haven't seen any, so yeah, that's good. So in terms of putting this together, um, I think it's just going to be a matter of well, we might. I think I could probably do the border first. I don't know if I'm which way is the right way up. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, there's probably still enough detail here to do the border, so I'll probably try and find the edge pieces. And then I think, to me, the obvious thing seems to be to oh, there's my poster. Seems to be to pick out like maybe the blue macarons. Do those first because they're very bright and stand out, and they'll be easy to find. And then, you know, maybe the green ones or the more like like white sort of off-white beigey ones um, yeah the pink ones might get left to last just because they tend to blend in a bit more with like the pink background of the image so yeah I get again I think it's going to be a bit of a intuitive process like I might change my mind as I go along depending what seems to be working but I think that's going to be my plan for for now so uh, I think might as well get into putting this beautiful puzzle together This puzzle is looking very, very pretty so far. 
The pastels are just really lovely. Yeah, I love the color palette of this and the details are really great. Like the image is very sharp and yeah, there's a lot of like, you can really see a lot of the very close up details. Yeah, it's just a really beautiful image overall. So yeah, really love it. And so far it's taken me a little while to get to this point, which I think would be a bit over halfway perhaps. It's taken me about four hours and 20 minutes. So a little bit longer than I spend on some puzzles. It's actually been reasonably challenging. Um, I, I did pretty much follow my sort of strategy of like doing the border first. So that bit was fine. And then doing the blues and then I think I did green and then I was going to do like these sort of caramel colored ones. But I kind of ended up doing pinks and purples too, even though I was going to leave those to last. So change the order of things a little bit, but um, yeah, but yeah, definitely some of the parts like the blue took a while to get started. But then I think I started becoming a bit more familiar with the puzzle and um, things started getting a bit easier. But then I started getting tired. So that all the pinks and purples started getting a bit more tricky. So yeah, I think um, my brain started breaking about the three and a half hour mark. So take lots of breaks. Don't be like me. Um, anyway, but yeah, I'm happy with how it's looking. Yeah, it's, I think it's really coming together. It looks, yeah, it looks really cool. So let's talk about the quality so far. I have to say I'm very impressed. Um, the pieces, yeah, they're lovely, smooth and matte. Um, there's really like, they have the tiniest bit of sheen under like the sort of filming lights, but when puzzling, there was no sheen at all. So I'm like really happy with that, um, which has been good just because like there are a lot of little subtle details and colors going on amongst like the different macarons. So yeah, I think it's important. Well, it's important for any puzzle, but especially one that has like a lot of fine details or very subtle color variations, it's good to be able to see what you're doing. So yeah, very happy with that. Um, yeah, like I said, nice and smooth and matte. Um, the pieces fit really nicely together. I haven't had a single false fit, which you would think there might be, especially with like a lot of similar colors going on, but no, everything's just sort of fit nicely where it's supposed to go. Um, you could tell very easily when something doesn't fit. So yeah, very pleased with that. And you can pick up sections fairly well. So I've got one here that I just sort of loosened before, but yeah, you can like pick up, you know, a whole macaron, which is good. <laughs> Great for this puzzle because you can work on the colors in front of you and then move them, just lift them up and move them to where they're supposed to go later. So yeah, really pleased with that. And um, yeah, everything, yeah, just a really nice, comfortable fit. Pieces um, seem to like come apart fairly easily. Sometimes you might need two hands, but they still, they're not so wedged together that you can't undo them, which is good. It means you're not gonna damage your puzzle when you're trying to like undo it. Um, speaking of damage, I haven't really seen any damaged parts. I think there might've been like one tiny little bent corner or something, but it's like so minuscule really. Um, but no, everything's been very perfect and yeah, just really lovely quality. And then I think the last thing that I have to say about the quality is puzzle dust. There really isn't any, like sure. My fingers feel a little bit dusty after a session of puzzling, but like the board is virtually spotless and there just hasn't been like any puzzle dust, chunky bits in the boxes. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, so yeah, overall really, yeah, really fantastic really having a great time putting this one together. So um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to do the rest of this. I'm sort of guessing maybe at least a couple more hours, maybe longer, because I've got a box well, two boxes here full of sort of lots of pinky bits and kind of white and off white bits. So a lot of very similar looking colored pieces and I've got some here as well that I, you know, sorted from those earlier. Um, but that being said, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable and sort of familiar with sort of the puzzle image. So I feel like it might still go hopefully a, a bit quicker than this first session. Um, so I guess we might as well get back into it and yeah, get back into some puzzling.
I finished piecing together this beautiful puzzle and yeah, I really love how it looks. Um, it just looks so pretty with all the like lovely pastel colored macarons. Um, they definitely make you feel a bit hungry. So watch out if you're doing this puzzle, but yeah, I really love how it looks. It's just such a pretty image and it's just really stunning. And I felt the same way with the succulent puzzle, the desert beauty puzzle. It just looked really stunning when it's all pieced together. Um, yeah, but this was still a fairly challenging puzzle. Um, so that last session of puzzling took me three hours, pretty much exactly. And all up, uh, both sessions, including sorting to end point took seven hours and 20 minutes, which is still pretty good, I think, for a 1000 piece puzzle. But I definitely found uh, there were certain times or parts of the puzzle that were quite, I guess, a bit more difficult or challenging than other parts. Um, I think that's just the nature of these sort of like, you know, when you've got like close up details and lots of like the same color and things like that, it's always going to be a bit more challenging. But that being said, I really had a great time doing it and I actually found the colors to be really kind of calming and soothing. So this is like just a really, even though it was like a challenging puzzle, it's still relaxing in a way. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, so I guess let's talk about the quality. Uh, yeah, I really really enjoyed it. I had a great puzzling experience. Um, so the surface is lovely and smooth and it's quite matte. I can see a little bit of sheen with my like filming lights, but actually when I was putting it together, I didn't experience any glare or sheen on the pieces I was working on. I think it showed up a little bit of sheen in the time lapse, but I really couldn't see that when I was puzzling. So yeah, it didn't bother me at all. And then as for the piece fit, it's really good. Um, there seems to be enough variation in the piece cuts that there wasn't a single false fit at all and I really thought there might be because of because we've got like a lot of this sort of pink background and you know similar colored macarons I thought oh for sure there's going to be there's got to be false fits right but really there just wasn't so really pleased with that that definitely helped making it a bit easier to piece together and yeah the how the pieces fit together is a very comfortable fit too so you can definitely pick up probably do a puzzle pickup I'd say and uh, I definitely could pick up whole macaron sections, which was very useful because I think for a lot of them, I was like doing them in front of me and then moving them. So yeah, that came in really handy. Um, and that being, that being said though, you can still undo the pieces pretty well. Like you might still need two hands, but they still come undone quite easily. They're not like wedged together. So that's good. You're not going to damage it when I'm doing the pieces. Um, so I think that's it about sort of piece fit. And then puzzle dust was pretty much uh, non-existent. Like, yes, I had a bit of dust on my hands and I think there's a very minor amount of dust left in the box, but like the board is very clean. I haven't really had to like wipe any dust off or anything. So yeah, really pleased with that. That wasn't a problem at all. And yeah, as for damaged pieces, yeah, there really weren't any. I think there might've been like a couple pieces that had the most like a minuscule bent corner or something, but it was like so minor that like I couldn't even tell you what pieces they would be. Um, but I think like, you know, damage in puzzles is pretty common. Um, and I think you're always gonna get a tiny weeny bit of damage, no matter, you know, how good a puzzle is. But yeah, I have to say, I've been very pleased because both this and the succulent puzzle or the desert beauty puzzle, there wasn't like any, any significant damage or really any noticeable damage at all. So yeah, really pleased with that. Let's talk price. So these puzzles are definitely a high-end price point. Uh, they retail for 60 Australian dollars. I'll pop the US equivalent on the screen. Um, that does include free shipping Australia-wide though, so I think that's a pretty awesome deal. And just before I forget, um, I do believe these puzzles are available to ship to certain countries overseas. Um, I'll pop the website and uh, Instagram and uh, any other details in the description box below so you can go look that up if you're interested. Um, but yeah, so for 60 Australian dollars, I do kind of expect a lot from my puzzles because you are sort of, you know, that is a luxury high-end price point. Um, but yeah, I think this puzzle sort of definitely fits into that category because it has just really fantastic quality. I really had no cons about the quality. Um, it's definitely some of my, you know, preferred type of, uh, you know, piece fit and I guess like texture and I really like the matte finish. Yeah, there's just really great things about this puzzle and the quality. Um, so yeah, and it definitely made for a very enjoyable, smooth sailing puzzling experience. 
And also, you know, I think the imagery is just really high quality and stunning as well. Like that goes for all the puzzles in this collection. You know, you're getting original photography, you know, that's going to be exclusive to this range of puzzles. So yeah, I think that's a really great point. And yeah, the other thing I really like is, you know, I feel like the packaging is very sort of luxury, you know, it's very like aesthetically pleasing. It you know, looks great. It is very like sturdy and everything. And you know, you also get um, your resealable bag and your, your poster. So yeah, I feel like, you know, you, you are getting some little extras there. And Overall, a really nice puzzle. So I guess the question is, would I recommend it for the $60? And I would say yes. I think, you know, you're just getting, yeah, just a really nice puzzle and you're going to have a really great experience. And I sort of feel like because of the high quality, um, it's a sort of puzzle that should last a long time. So, you know, you can get more use out of it by, you know, if you're lending it to friends or family or, you know, you just want to do it a lot of times. I also think as well, these images are just so beautiful that if you're the sort of person who likes to sort of um, frame their puzzles, like these are a really good option because yeah, they're just beautiful. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of Le Macaron puzzle. Is it your type of puzzle? Do you like photography puzzles? And have you, you know, heard, already heard of this brand and maybe you've already got some, let us know in the comments or, you know, are there some in the uh, range that you've been eyeing off that you've added to your wish list? If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new puzzle video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.